welcome back to this series of InfoShare tutorials. In this section, we will be finding out how to change the table views and how to download the data. This screenshot is showing the final table that we generated at the end of Module 2. If we scroll down from this view, we will see that at the bottom of the table there are a series of useful footnotes, as well as information such as the units and magnitude scales when they are applicable. These footnotes are often of high importance and will accompany the table if it's then downloaded into another format. Returning to the top of the screen, we see there are a couple of drop down menus for us to explore. Firstly we have the edit table drop down menu. The first option here is to remove zero rows. This can be useful if you have a large table with many zero values in it, as it will automatically take out any rows which only contain a string of zeros. Once activated, this can often make your table look far more readable and manageable. In this example, however, we have numbers in all of the rows, so there is no need for us to select this option. Moving further down the list, another frequently useful option is the Change Layout Facility. Here you have some green boxes that each represents a different variable within the table. These boxes are displayed on a set of axes, which help determine which variables are going to be included in the rows of the table, and which variables are going to be included in the columns of the table. To change the layout of the table, you simply click and drag on these green boxes to change their positions from rows to columns or vice versa. Here we can click and drag the country of residence variable so that it appears in the rows. And then we will click and drag the time variable so that it appears in the columns. Pressing OK allows us to view the table. Notice that the data is exactly the same as previously displayed, only the position of the variables has changed. A quicker way to automatically change these views is to choose the pivot option in the drop down menu. Pivot clockwise and pivot anti clockwise. The final two options on this list are change text code representation and change decimal places. The text code option is useful if one of your variables has a classification coding system associated with it. The option allows you to decide whether you would like the numeric code displayed with the variable or not. Change decimal places is fairly self-explanatory. The second drop down menu allows you to decide how you want to save the table. The default here is the view on screen that we currently have. Another useful option is the Download to Excel, which will create a standard spreadsheet. The Common Delimited option will also create an Excel spreadsheet, but the format will be slightly different. As we mentioned earlier, when you download the table to these other formats, the footnotes will automatically be transferred to the new table as well. The final option, however, is to save the table query itself. Many of the tables in InfoShare are updated every month or on a regular basis so we may need to use InfoShare to, retrie to retrieve the new data quite often. We can select the table query option to save us time if we plan on constantly updating the data we have obtained. When we click on this option, we are automatically asked if we wish to open or save the TQX file. At this point, we will want to select Save, and to then save this file somewhere on our own computer system, perhaps even the desktop. Here we have the InfoShare landing page that we saw briefly in Module 1, but now, rather than having to browse or search for the table we want to build, we can instead select the Load Query tab at the top of the screen. Now all we want to do is load the TQX table query file into the space provided. To do this, we click on Browse, and we then locate the table query from where we saved it earlier.
This will simply cause InfoShare to load the same table that we generated earlier. To make sure that any newer information is added, we also need to make sure that we put the tick in the options box, Add Most Recent Time Periods. Click on the tick box and then press Go. Notice that two more recent periods have been added to the table, January 2010 and February 2010. Join me in the next tutorial where we will look specifically at the overseas trade tables.